Fact, Guyana is located on the northern coast of the South American continent. The Atlantic Ocean to the north, Brazil to the southwest, Suriname to the east, and Venezuela to the northwest. From the Cooperative Republic of Beautiful Guyana, I am Lorene Ward. Welcome to Homestretch Magazine. This week we will highlight Personality of the Week salads and lifestyles, new music by Dwengo George and Feel the Rhythm. A small town boy from Essie is on the move to make waves in the gospel fraternity. And Nadia recently caught up with Dwengo George. In 2015, Dwayne Joe made his debut track and eventually compiled his own album of gospel music. The album was called God Is So Good. As the twists and turns came with life, the young artist had to move from Dartmouth in Essequibo and take up residence closer to Georgetown for work. Mm, tell yes. us about your day job. Um, well, court and court and registry and more court. Mm -hmm. Taking up a job at a legal firm meant that DeWanger would have more funds to invest in his music production, but less time to do so. Nevertheless, he doesn't find it to be a big hurdle. When I start writing, like the support and what am I even doing this for? Mm -hmm. But it's really uh, what I love to do, so I'm going to continue doing it because mm -hmm. it makes me happy mm -hmm. and it also helps me to, as I said, to express myself. Here he is today already completing two tracks for his new album, Lord Transform Me and My Story for Your Glory. The first track I did uh, at Vijay, that's on the East Coast. Um, that's uh, Lord Transform Me. Mm -hmm. And the second track, This Is My Story for Your Glory. Mm -hmm. um, the first track is about, uh, well, surrendering all and asking God really to do for you, kind of do for yourself. And the second track is based on uh, how how you feel about having God directing you in your life and um, what can you do for others not only for yourself what can you do for others and to be a good role model and a good example in society and where are you rec recording the second track um, I did it at uh, uh, rough cut, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, I look to the sky, but this is my prize. You said everything is gonna be alright. So bright, light up the sky, light up the sky, let it shine, light up the sky. This is my story. For your glory, for you are worthy, oh, worthy. Please take my hands, show me your plans. You said everything is gonna be alright. Dwayne intends to start working on videos for these new tracks in the coming months. So it's kind of back and forth with the recording studios. <laughs> yes, yes. Do you think that you get better results when you do this? Yes, is the I mean all producers are good, but uh, you need to see the best of the best, which could bring out mm -hmm. the tune and the right melody and how you imagine or want it or need mm -hmm. it to be, because not all producers can give you the results of the best of the best. Back and forth he goes trying to get the right fit for the songs to be produced. When asked about support in the industry for youngsters like him, this is what he had to say. Do what you do best 
because everyone is talented and gifted in different way mm -hmm. especially music um they shouldn't give up they should be passionate mm -hmm. and be ter determined and to and to be committed mm -hmm. in the um endeavor to get a success because it's not easy mm -hmm. there's a lot of challenges uh, ups and down, it could be frustrated, but you know, keep it focused and you get there. Five years into the future, Duanger has hopes for himself and others who want to follow up music. As a producer, musician, uh, to help not only uh, recording more songs, but to probably have a studio mm -hmm. and to help others to recording. We're looking forward to the rest of the album from the Wenga. Impressive. Music build communities and acts as a form of communication. Decades ago, new music was created using things lying around. The story of the steel pan has developed into a legend where fact and fantasy has been interwoven. Various claims and counterclaims have shrouded the birth and earliest development of the steel pan in a web of mystery. Development started from 1935 to 45, and it was during this period that the tambu bamboo and metal bands underwent a radical transformation. The young innovators experimented feverishly and soon the first pan or ping pong appeared with sufficient notes to carry a simple melody. Pans are no different. They have uh, C, some pans range from C to uh, high C sharp. Some pans range from C to high E depends on the pan. Um, the notes would really fall under the soprano, alto, tenor, bass um, distinctions. So building a steel pan is actually a lot of physical work. It, it, it really comes from physical input, the sinking of drums, shaping, uh, smoothing of notes and that kind of stuff. It all depends on the physical. It's a lot of hammering. Musical culture in Guyana has always been known to be appealing and delightful. The fine music that the steel pan exudes fills its surroundings with peace and a pleasant aura. Experiment through the years resulted in the development of a full range of instruments of steel orchestra as we know them today. We have now embraced what we call the panorama kind of music. It's, yeah, it was originated in Trinidad. And we've embraced it and maybe you know excelled in that in that frame. We've now gone past you know some of the panorama techniques that we've grown to know.
popularity of steel bands has grown. They are now plentiful in Caribbean diaspora communities all over the world. Our personality of the week is a staff member on the Logos Hope ship that's traveling the world. Ms. Erika Thakardin, the only crew member on the Logos Hope ship with roots in Guyana. She was born and raised in Barbados, but her parents are Guyanese. Erika's first experience with Logos Hope was in Barbados as a volunteer. It was her greatest desire to serve on this ship. So I've been on board for a year and two months now, and so I've been working in the, the book fair department, um, and yeah, I've just been traveling with the ship along with the ministry and it's been pretty amazing getting to meet people from different cultures. We live with over 400 crew members from over 60 different nations and you get to learn so much about culture and languages and the people but then we also get to visit um, the countries throughout Latin America so far and just getting to learn the culture has been amazing. After graduating from the University of the West Indies, the young leader joined Logos Hope in Puerto Cuestrol, Guatemala. Since then, she has been part of the Book Fair staff. Um, I think one of my greatest memories, I could specifically say, was uh, a day when we got to go on shore. Um, a team of us went out, about four or five of us, and we got to go to this um, lesser fortunate area and um, we got to do a program for kids in this area. And so people from their houses just came out and it was in the street, there wasn't any paved roads or anything. Um, and we had like maybe 20, 30 kids just from all over the neighborhood and their moms and they had babies ev and everyone was there. And we got to share um, kind of our, our objectives of the ship, knowledge, help and hope. And we got to share values with those kids and um, spending time with them and loving on them, it was an experience that I don't think I can forget. Erica is one of the ship's 400 volunteers who come from over 60 nations, leaving behind families, jobs and homes. Nevertheless, she's committed to serving people through social service projects and good literature. It's, it's tricky um, because sometimes we were in a different time zone, depending on where we were, from my family, so I would call and I'll be awake or stuff like that. It wasn't too big of a gap because my family's in Barbados, but um, it was always interesting to, you had to be very intentional with that time. So setting a time like, mom, I'm going to call you today and we'll chat and we would chat for maybe an hour or so and then it was, yeah, it had its challenges, but it, we made it work. The motivator believes once we seek to be the best we can and not limit ourselves, anything is possible. Congratulations to this vibrant, committed and unique personality who continues to make Guyana proud. I think for me, I love learning new cultures. Um, and that definitely, although the Latino culture is different, it's slightly similar, it's a warm culture like the Caribbean. Um, so it was very easy to kind of adapt to that. Um, not completely, because the language is completely different and I came to the ship not knowing any other language but English. Um, but working in the book fair, having to greet people, having to answer their questions, bit by bit we, I picked up the language and from that, yeah, that was I think the coolest part. Now I can understand a bit of Spanish and a bit of Portuguese and be able to explain myself, at least answer their questions in the book fair. It's a joy to see this young professional with Guyanese parentage making our beautiful country known worldwide. In our final feature, Katina visits a local salad chef who demonstrates the making of two unconventional salads. I wanna love, 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 love. Good nutrition is an important part of leading a healthy lifestyle. A balanced diet can help to reach and maintain a healthy weight, reduce the risk of chronic diseases, and promotes overall health and well-being. This local salad chef is changing the healthy eating game with her wide variety of exceptional salads, breakfast cups, and smoothies. Meet Malaika Rupan, the founder of Salads and Lifestyles. What I'll be making for you guys is a salad and a smoothie. I'm going to be preparing the quinoa Mexican salad. I'm going to show you guys how that's done. 
and also one of my favorite gourmet salad and another thing that I'll be showing you is our favorite favorite strawberry banana smoothie first of all I'm going to start with my liquid I'm going to be using almond milk I love to be healthy so I think this is the best liquid for me to use my smoothie so it can get that you know nice liquidy form so if you guys would like you can also use soy milk or maybe coconut water but I'm going to make a breakfast smoothie so I'll be using almond milk next I'm gonna add my frozen fruits I have here bananas so I'm just gonna throw this on top of the almond milk Along with their smoothies, they also make a wide variety of plant and protein-based salads and breakfast vitality cups. I'm gonna, just going to check the amount of milk I have and if you want you can pour a little more. I am going to throw a little more because my fruit seems to be a, little more, a bit more than the milk. So this is all I'm using today. I have almond milk, bananas, some mangoes, frozen strawberries, ground flax seed, and chia seed. This milk, this uh, mix, I'm going to use as a breakfast smoothie. So next, I'm just going to blend my fruits together. Malaika's healthy eating journey began as a result of her aunt's inspiration during a visit abroad. Here we have our strawberry banana smoothie and like I said, I just put a few fruits there for the toppers with some nice black sesame seeds. So this would be perfect if you're looking to lose weight. This would be perfect for breakfast. The distinction she believes is her ingredients since they are not those Guyanese commonly choose when preparing meals. I'm going to show you how I like to make my quinoa Mexican salad. So first of all, I have here some cooked quinoa. So I'm just gonna place the quinoa into my salad bowl. Then I'm going to add my black bean. I love to match quinoa with black bean because the taste is also almost as if you're eating a cook-up, even though it's a salad. So you can add some black beans. These are cooked black beans. I'm going to be adding some nice fresh corn. Then I'm going to take my regulars, some nice cut cucumbers. I'm going to place those in there. Then tomatoes, of course. I think tomato gives it a really nice, pretty look, and it's so flavorful. And I like to add some celery so I'm just gonna complete my salad by placing it in this really cute bell pepper and like I say I think presentation counts so it's a bit different I am going to get into another salad that is most it's more popular than the one that I've just made and I'm going to be using lettuce as my base so I'm gonna take some freshly washed lettuce I'm gonna place it into my salad bowl sometimes I would use olive oil and I'm going to show you how I do that just to marinate my lettuce a bit not too much you don't want it to become too oily so the olive oil gives it not only flavor but it kind of softens it a bit you know next i'm going to take some tomatoes left over from my quinoa salad and i'm going to dress it nicely next i'm going to take some protons now these are everybody's favorite toppers especially for Caesar salads and I think they're so crunchy and so nice you don't want to put too much if you you know trying to stay away from carbs next I'm going to go into my cherries I have here tart cherries 
I'm gonna just sprinkle some on the top. I'm gonna take some sunflower seeds and I'm going to just sprinkle like this. And my pumpkin seeds, I'm going to sprinkle the same way. Three simple yet healthy dishes. Simple ways to make healthier foods. Be sure to follow the steps and create your own. Until we meet again for another episode of Homestretch Magazine, I am Lorene Ward reminding you to like our Homestretch Magazine Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be safe, keep smiling and stay positive.